just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only hurting. Hello, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> oh, my. You know, I've, this program um, is, feels so timely. And um, I know Jeff and I are moderators on the 30-day program, Unwind Your Mind Experience. And it's been coming up in that group and been coming up in our household. and. So it just felt like this topic, it's time had come. And today we're going to talk about free will. And I must say, this one confused me to no end um, for most of my life. And uh, for me, free will felt like, and this is the way it occurred in the parable of Calico. Um, if you pissed me off, I wrote you off. <laughs> So it was like I did a lot of stuffing of emotions. I just, okay, well, you don't agree with me. I don't have to deal with you anymore, and I won't. And this is, um, I think, a huge confusion within A Course in Miracles because uh, most of the people I did book study kind of a, were in agreement on this. So we were writing people off right and left. And that is not the way free will is described by Jesus. And uh, so I wanted to just go into that a little because I think if you can really grasp this topic of free will, you've got the whole, the whole teachings of Jesus. So it's just one little topic that you have to get your handle on. And this is um, in chapter 13 under uh, finding purpose, uh, finding the present. Awakening unto Christ is following the laws of love of your free will and out of quiet recognition of the truth in them, the attraction of light must draw you willingly, and willingness is signified by giving. Okay, so now we just entered another little topic of giving. What the heck is giving? You know, I give money, I support all the right causes, I support all the right politicians, and, you know, life still sucks. <laughs> So it's kind of like really kind of going much deeper with this into this idea. And, you know, again, the parable of Calico is full of these ideas of right and wrong, good and bad. And I titled this show, actually, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? Um, and that was a huge belief I had to really rankle with um, because I saw myself as a good person and I saw bad things happening to me. So it was kind of like, well, screw God. <laughs> and that's where it would, it would cycle in this really negative way of um, this can't be right. And really all it was was my, so my hatred of God because I kept seeing God as creating bad things happening to good people. So in the separation and the atonement, uh, the origins of the separation, because this free will thing goes back to, this is, this is the unraveling of why would anyone separate from heaven? That seems awfully silly. But I was doing it all the time. So in here, it explains it quite. Jesus is very clear. He doesn't mince words. The inappropriate use of extension. Now this is giving, okay? So giving and extension are the same thing. The inappropriate use of extension or projection occurs when you believe that some emptiness or lack exists in you and that you can fill it with your own ideas instead of truth. I did it all the time. First, there's four things. It's a process. It's like four things. First, you believe that what God created can be changed by your own mind. Oh, my God. I was always attempting in the parable of Calico to change something. 
everything that I saw as bad needed to be changed. So I was always seeing that God created something and I needed to change it with my, with my will, okay? Because I was seeing free will as something I needed to do in form. And that's not it. Free will is love. That's all it is, love. Second, you believe that what is perfect can be rendered imperfect or lacking. And this is where all those people in the parable of Calico that I made wrong, they were not perfect, okay? And I was clear they weren't perfect, and a lot of people around me were in agreement with me. I, you know, I, I, I like to, again, oh, this is dating myself, and some may not understand this, but um, in my parable, Kennedy was the perfect president. Nixon was the worst president, okay? Well, the reality is Kennedy got us into the war in Vietnam. It wasn't Nixon. Many people say, well, Nixon got us into, no, Kennedy did. My good pre So this is like really messing with my thinking, okay? Well, good is not good anymore. Good is bad, but bad is not really bad. And so this is, <laughs> this is where I got free will pretty confused. You know, I wanted to support the right candidate. I wanted to support the good candidate. I wanted to not support the bad candidate. It's this whole belief system of good and bad. One is better than, you know, and manifesting. I mean, this brings in the, this whole topic of free will brings in this concept of manifesting. If I can get the right candidate into office, if I can make enough money, if I can have the perfect relationship or live in the perfect home, I will be happy. But that never panned out for me. <laughs> And I really had to, this whole idea, because free will also goes into the script is written. So my script towards the very end before I completely gave up and became willing, really became willing to make the, the peace of God my only desire, was in this nasty foreclosure I had with Chase Manhattan Bank. It was my perfect home. I had the perfect home with the perfect animals in the perfect location. Everything was perfect, except Chase, there was a little clerical error at some point. <laughs> and it resulted in a foreclosure. And I fought like a pit bull man in the ring. I gave it my all. I was fighting everything. It ended with AK-47s, nasty takeovers, governors were involved. I mean, I really, I was fighting because this was not right. This was wrong. And this is where I got completely slammed against the wall, which was absolutely perfect. Because I really got, well, the only thing I want is the peace of God. Because like, you know, Eckhart Tolle sitting on the park bench with no money, no food, he had the peace of God. And that was his only desire. And he was happy. And that's really all I've wanted my whole life was happiness. So when I gave up fighting the foreclosure and walking away from the dream house, the dream animals, the dream property, the dream everything, the dream, the horizontal dream of what perfection was, when I was able to move beyond that and quit fighting and quit making them wrong, them, and it was a lot of thems. In that parable, when I was able to turn that around, and that was my free will, I could choose to fight or I could choose to make peace. I could choose to make wrong or I could choose to love. I could choose to fear or love. That was it, that's free will. And the reality is I am love, I forgot. That was the separation. Third, you believe that you can distort the creations of God, including yourself. I can distort the creations of God. Everything is love. It's only my thinking that is stinking. <laughs> and that's for me to go back to my, my mind and go, where is a correction needed? Because I desire the peace of God. The fourth process in this use of extension um, to correct the emptiness or lack that we see in our lives. You believe that you can create yourself and the direction of your own creation is up to you. 
and oh my God, my whole life has been spent finding the perfect everything, you know? And then after the foreclosure, then the cancer came and it was like, really? But that even took me deeper into this concept of my free will is only love. It's not about trying to change anything. The body, and that's the, hence the name of this show, Beyond the Body, me thinking that I know what's best on any level. And it's really about moving that from what can Calico get to what can I extend? It wasn't about me receiving something. It was, I wasn't, I was, I was a crappy extender. I didn't know how to extend love everywhere. I had my exceptions. I had my exclusions, you know, politics, job, relationships. And if I didn't, if I didn't agree with something, they were dead to me. I just walked away going, well, I don't have to deal with them anymore. But the reality is I am love. So guess what? Love deals with everything. And I was gifting myself a, a, a script that was perfect for learning this lesson. And all it says, and you know, in the beginning of the book, <laughs> the very beginning, the very beginning, and this, this one I didn't understand for most of my life, or study of this course, free will does not mean that you get to establish the curriculum. The curriculum is written and it's to bring us back to love. Everything. And this is free will because we are love. We forgot. That's when we separated. So until we bring this back to merging these two errors in thinking that I'm separate, and then I can correct something. I can manifest something better than what I've got. It's like, no, can you love what you are? No matter what it looks like. <clears throat> no, what are, no matter what the circumstances. You know, I was taken back to, um, again, the Cal I mean, I've, been given, I've given myself these parables, and it's not by chance. You know, in Africa, man, everything was wrong in Africa, everything. And I was in a refugee camp. There was nothing right in the refugee camp, absolutely nothing. But I met these beautiful people, and they were refugees, and they would walk every day a mile to the hospital that was 30 beds, and there were usually four or five people in the bed. I made all of this wrong. Not enough beds, you know, not enough people assisting. But these refugees would actually give without any intention of getting anything for themselves they would walk a mile to the hospital to clean sheets from four leaking people you know <laughs> i mean they would wash sheets all day and then walk back to their blue plastic enclosures and i spent a lot of time with a couple of them and i asked why are you doing this you have nothing you should be spending all day trying to figure out where your next meal is coming from, and yet you're walking to the hospital, serving, and then walking back. And it's like it made no sense to me. And, you know, they had, such, they had so much more faith than I did. Um, they had blue plastic enclosure for their weekly church services. And they would just pray. And they knew that extension for them was in giving what they could in a situation that seemed completely unmanageable. And so they would show up every day. What can I do? How can I serve? And it's like, and it's not about changing the situation. They had no interest in changing anything. It was that they were there to hold the hand of a child that his mother just died. They were there to take care of others in any way that they could because they knew they were love. They knew they had that to give. And if we can't see this in our own lives and stop making people wrong. And in the 30 day program, there was a beautiful share by a man, Dan, and um, he was making some things wrong. And it was like overnight he got that it's no, that's not it. It's mine to really see with clarity and particularly from a teacher like David, who is uncompromising in these principles. And that's the main reason I'm, I'm living in the Living Miracles community is I needed someone uncompromising because I was, it was too easy for me to wiggle out in every way possible. 
No, this is still not as good as this. It's like, no, no, it's all perfect. And until I really, really live that concept, there's no love. And so just to kind of have some kind of flow with this program, um, these four processes, the inappropriate use of extension, these related distortions represent a picture of what actually occurred in the separation. So every time we're making anything or anybody wrong, I don't care how wrong they are. In my world, Nixon was so wrong, so very wrong. But that was me separating again. And it was until I became willing to not do that, to not make anyone wrong, not make any food wrong, not make any treatment wrong, not make anything anywhere wrong, did I start turning the big ship around. And I, I say this, David says it in one of his talks, <clears throat> making this shift in mind, because everything is upside down and turned inside out. And until you really transition that around, you're not gonna go anywhere with A Course in Miracles. And so this was my beginning of turning the ship around, of, of really seeing I had to make no exceptions to the law of love. And there is only one law, and that is to love. And so you know, he says there's the, you know, I see it as a giant aircraft carrier. And it's like when they make a decision to turn the, the ship around, they set the coordinates, but it takes a, long time for that ship to actually turn around and that's where we get to practice extending love in all situations no matter what and that's me actually healing the separation in every decision in my mind that says no I think I, I will accept that this is perfect and it means really being humble and this is not one that came normal or natural to me on any level because I was right I live my life, I'm right, and I am the captain of my ship, and I will take it where I feel is in my best interest to go. And it's until I became humble and willing to go, okay, God, you know, I'm not in charge here. Foreclosure, cancer, I am so not in charge. And that's what the gifts of those were. And rethinking sickness, I just need to say, we're going to be doing a new program, June starts June 1st, I think, but... Um, it really is to see that the healing is in my mind always. So it doesn't matter if you're sick or you see something wrong in your body or if you're making your next door neighbor an enemy. That's the healing of the separation. It's those little things. And the only way through that is to share. And this is where the 30-day program, prayer and support we offer through Living Miracles, can support you in this. It's to really, really express, wow, and this is what Dan did in the 30-day program. He, he expressed, I'm making David wrong, and that's not helpful. And it's like, and it's that, that's really humility. That's really going, yeah, I, I had an error in my thinking, and I was making a situation wrong, a person wrong, you know, politics wrong, foreclosures wrong, cancer wrong, refugee camps wrong. Whatever it is that you're making wrong, that's your gift to yourself to see it differently so that you can start healing this, this separation. The related distortions represent a picture of what actually occurred in the separation. We thought we had a better way. I know how to deal with refugees, politics, <laughs> health. <laughs> That's not being humble. That's just the opposite, which kept me in the separation. And that's the only way to detour from fear. So all of these things were fear makers in my mind. Fear that people could be hungry. Fear that people could be homeless. Fear that people could be sick and die. Fear of politics going badly. But the reality with politics, I just need to sidetrack here, is... They're all equally distorted 
doesn't matter who you support or who you think is wrong. <laughs> They're just our gifts for loving, for learning to love. It seems so simple and saying it sounds so simple. And believe me, and I used this description before, so many of my opportunities for love came with someone extending to me a handful of rattlesnakes. And that's the way it felt. It's like, what, are you nuts? No, that's the way, that's the access. Receive the gift exactly as it is given. And I have learned now that I'm really getting these principles and working with them on a daily basis, that's the only reason this community exists. We all have a group of people in this community that are committed to working this. And it's not easy. Loving everything, no matter what. And you want to hate people so bad sometimes and you think, no, they have nothing to offer me. This is, as Frances Yu said in one of her shares, this is messed up. Well, I used to use the F word, but basically it's the same thing. This is messed up, that I have to see this differently. But that's the access. That gets you back to who you are as free will, which is to love. That's the only reason we're here is to love all of it. Every single little thing, particularly if we don't like it. Because that's going to be the fast track. If you can grab those things, it's easy to fall in love with someone that you, you're attracted to and you fall in love with a beautiful home, fall in love with a new job, more money. Those are easy things, but that's taking in the wrong direction. Fall in love with the things that you really don't like. And that's where Rethinking Sickness was so powerful because everyone came to this program not liking something a lot whether it was their body, their sickness, their situation. They didn't like it a lot. And I say that's the first step. That actually speeds up the process. Great. If you can find something that you really don't like, stay there with God. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. Holy Spirit, decide for God for me. This is unbearable. I hate this. Great. I have free will to learn how to love, to learn that I don't know how to do this and learn that there is one that can help me. And that's Holy Spirit. That's God. Jesus, that's the only reason Jesus was in body was to show us how to do this process. And there you go. That is A Course in Miracles in a nutshell. And it's like the more we can really be honest and this is where the expression is so critical because i would just shove expressions you know it's like well i'll just never think about that again and it would loop through and i go no not thinking about it it'll through, loop through again no i'm really not going to think about it and until i was able to say guess what i'm thinking and this smells bad i don't like this I don't want to own it. I don't want to express it. But when I would express it, then there was freedom. And that just kind of the ship just was able to angle more and more and more in the direction back to free will, which is to be the loving being that I am. Because separation is in my mind. Sickness is in my mind. Refugees are in my mind. They're all just thoughts. And they're for me to correct and change and, and bring back to what is true, which is we're all loving beings. I don't care if you, you have a name of President Trump or Calico. We're all loving beings. We just forgot. And sometimes, you know, I'm not going to start in this, in this program, but, you know, the self-hatred that we have towards our body, it's a big, big, big sickness. You know, it's like, no, your love in whatever container you find yourself. It's like, can you love the container? And that's, you know, there, all these thoughts, just take them on. Everything God created is like Him. God created love. It's like Him. And so that's the only choice we have in free will, is to change our mind. That's it. Simple concept. Tough to do, 
And that's where I invite you to do the 30-day program, Rethinking Sickness, all the many programs. Living Miracles is uncompromising because David is uncompromising. There's not a program that is offered by this community that isn't at this level of uncompromising love. And I invite you to find one that speaks to you and go there. Join. It's the only way I know to really turn this ship around because it's a big one. Hate is a big one, and love is equally big, but it's in the opposite direction. So all I can say is I am so damn grateful for this community and for you that are willing to take this on because it's one mind at a time. We come back to one mind, and it's love. Yeah. That's the gift we can give to ourselves. Looks like a bed of rattlesnakes, but it's totally doable. And I guarantee everyone within this community for sure, but within many of our minds community, like the 30 day program, we're looking at this and we're taking it on, we're turning it around. So until next week, and just a plug, if any of you have questions, please private message me on Facebook. I think my email is around somewhere send me a message and I'd be happy to answer them at some point when I get enough questions. I'll do another question and answer session. So anyway, for today, I just want you to find one area of your mind that you have a strong opinion about that is not loving and just offer it in prayer to Holy Spirit to see it differently and just see what miracle can come out of it. Okay? So for now... I love you all, my brothers and sisters. I can't do this without you. And we're all going home together or we're not going home. So <laughs> I love you much. I love you much. It was just a tiny mad idea.